The Indian legal world has been absorbing a number of important changes and judgments in the last year. So let's start with taxation. What's been the key development there? I mean, uh, if you look at the Indian judiciary, in fact, we had a landmark judgment by the Supreme Court of India in the famous case called Vodafone, where the Indian tax authorities were trying to ask the Vodafone to pay more than $2 billion dollars for the acquisition of shares of H from Hong Kong. The question was whether the Indian tax authorities would have jurisdiction to tax this particular transaction. While the authorities and the high courts held that the tax authorities had the jurisdiction, the Supreme Court turned it down and said, no, the territorial nexus has to be proved. In this particular case, Indian tax authorities did not have jurisdiction they set aside the demand, ordered the government to refund this amount with interest. And there are other cases also, both on direct taxes and indirect taxes, epoch-making decisions. And these only prove that Indian judiciary stands alone and they are majestic. They don't care who is standing before them, whether he is a foreigner or Indian, what is the stake involved whether the government will be benefited by certain things. Absolutely no bias, and it is fiercely independent. And what have been the developments specifically in the area of anti-avoidance rules? Yeah, anti-avoidance rules is a situation where uh, the avoidance can take place within the legal system, outside the legal system. Within the legal system, for example, if closely held companies and holding companies they get the shares without paying for it. Then actually there is no system of capital gains calculations. Now the government comes back and then says, we will value them at the fair market value. And similarly, if Indians had assets outside India or income outside India not disclosed, earlier the government of India could uh, demand those assessments within eight years' time. Now they can actually reopen the assessment for 16 years. Intellectual property is increasingly important and valuable, and it's a speciality of your firm. So what should investors bear in mind? Oh, in India, there are a lot of exciting things happening. The Indian companies who were otherwise not looking at converting inventions into intellectual properties are now beginning to do so. There is a slow movement from the education institutions, universities, public sector, uh, research institutions, or private sector. They are all doing very well. And in the last three, four years, the number of Indian companies filing patents and designs is increasing exponentially. And so also the foreign companies filing patents in India. There is a huge demand in India. And there is a good talent in India. If the foreign companies do not protect their inventions in India, they will be copied. And they can do nothing about it. Therefore, it is necessary that they have to file their patents and protect their interest. Fortunately, in India, the judicial system is so good that they can protect the intellectual properties of foreign companies, no matter whether the Indian companies are merely copying or not. The court will not allow it to happen. So clearly, protecting IP is a major factor. But what other advice might you have for foreign investors uh, who are looking to India? The actual as uh, foreign investors are concerned, first of all, if they are getting into joint venture, they must look at the proper uh, person with whom they are entering into joint venture, is the right person or not. Proper tax due diligence and legal due diligence must be done. The more important thing is, they must ensure all their patents are filed in the, in the patent office and get the patents. And any licensing agreement they have must be registered with the patent office. Also look for who are all the infringers, small and big, and start the actions against them, against infringement. The courts are there to protect you. Lakshmi Kumaran, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir.